Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We are going to help you chart the future, your course, your journey in life. I, like, I call it a journey. I really think that we're all on a continuous journey, no matter what we're doing. Uh, and if you're not moving on a journey... That's probably not good. You're probably not happy. So we've got somebody to help you with that. She is a life coach and her name is Latanya Rawls and she's back with us. Hi, Latanya. How are you doing? Hi, Steve. I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic. How are things in Georgia this morning? It's nice. It's a little chilly. It's like 60, but it's still kind of like heat at night, air conditioned during the day kind of situation. <laughs> air conditioning at 60 degrees? Well, no, not now, but like later it'll be in the 70s. So I'll, you know, yeah. I'm like, it's going to get hot in here. So I'm not calling you. I'm not calling you out on it. I'm just jealous. That's all. <laughs> I'm looking at, uh, wow. I think it's 42 here in the New York. Oh, area. okay. So I won't complain about the the chilly 60 <laughs> that I am experiencing right now. Yeah, and I think it'll be like 58 tomorrow with some rain, but you know, getting back to you know more regular temperatures. So yeah. we've talked about a lot of different things in past podcasts. How we can do self care to make ourselves better. You did your summit, which was. Super awesome with a whole bunch of different contributors on your uh, Instagram page. Is it possible to get any any of those videos for anybody that missed that? Yeah, so I actually do have it where you can still, you know, get the videos. Now it's $47 to have access to the audio and the video. And you also get some bonus speakers that I didn't release during the, the normal course of the summit. And you still get that free session with me and access to a oh. private Facebook group and a free journal. So it is still available um, now, so the link is actually, um, if you, if you go to my Instagram, I can send you the link for that. It's not on the website though. Totally well worth it. When you think about the, the content is literally hours and hours of inspirational, motivational, just information to move your life forward. You know, each, yeah. each segment isn't like, you know, two minutes. It's a, no, it's a this like 20 to 40 minutes. And it's the feedback has been amazing because it's like little things like you never know what's going to grab somebody and what's going to speak to somebody. And that's why I love having the diversity of all the different speakers that we had. And I get the messages like this one little sentence that somebody made that I don't even remember, like spoke to someone and they're like, thank you for having her that really. And I was just like, it's amazing when you're open and when you're looking like you don't know um, who needs to hear the, your message. And that's why I'm encouraging people to, you know, find their voice and put their message out there because it will help somebody. The smallest thing an eye contact can really, you know, change somebody's day. Yep. And I think we overlook those small gestures in our day-to-day -day life now. So you just said something about a journal that comes along with it. Tell me about that. Yeah. So I just created a journal to help people who maybe aren't used to journaling. It's got some prompts to kind of get you thinking. And I put in like extra pages because sometimes, you know, you get, you start writing and it just, you're just in the flow. And I just wanted to make sure that people had that space to kind of just get things out and, and the prompts to help you if you're feeling stuck and not really knowing where to start, because if you're new to journaling, mm. you know, you think of like when you're little, it's like, dear diary, but everyone doesn't write like that. You know, you could just be like, you know what? I'm drawing, I'm doodling. And it just kind of starts kind of patchy. And then you just get into a flow and your thoughts and feelings come out. And I think that's where you start to really grow um, once you do that over time, because you'd be surprised what comes out when you just let it happen. So this is where I, this is, this is my default issue here. I know I should be journal, journaling, been talking with lots of people, even friends about it for the longest time. I have three different journals. Every page is blank. I'm not even making that up. I'm looking at it right now to the side. I have one right over there. I haven't started doing it. And I don't know why I like writing. Uh, I'm creative. Not that you have to be, but right. it's your, your own personal journal, but I don't know where to start. And mm. I think a lot of people are in the, uh, in the same situation. Can, can you help us out with that? Sometimes I'll just be like, I don't even know I'm writing this. I don't even know what to say. I don't, I feel like this. Um, I just, today was just, and I kind of start like that. And it's maybe only a couple sentences and I may do that a couple of times. And what I found in the beginning for me is I didn't like to actually sit down and take the time to write. And so I would record voice notes on my phone. If I was driving in the car and something came to me, I would just start speaking it on my phone. And that would be my, my journal. Or I wake up in the middle of the night with these thoughts and I would be typing them on my phone. And so it doesn't have to look a certain way. It gets to be your way. And so if you are better in the moment, um, and if you just start doodling, maybe you don't write anything. You're just doodling. You're just being, you're taking space 
and, and time for yourself. And that's important. And it, it will come out however it needs to come out. Like it'll make sense to you. Thanks for saying that. Cause I, I am a doodler. Um, if, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now, I would have been a syndicated cartoonist. Like in my wow. old twenties, that's, that's the direction. So a lot of times when I have a pen in hand, that's what I start doing. I don't even know I'm doing it. You know, I'll draw a face or whatever, but that's, that's a it good counts. practice. Yeah. It Cause counts. that'll, that'll start the, the eye to the hand, to the mind, to get you to start moving along with something. And then, you know, invariably thoughts will come out and it, I think it's fear of failure. I think a lot of us have mm -hmm. that where. I'm going to set that time aside and I'm not going to write anything down. And I just failed. I failed. Yeah. And, and it just takes it. It's a habit. You got to get into the habit of doing it. It is. And like I said, like it gets to look like however you want it to look like. So if you right. feel comfortable doodling, like that counts as your journaling time because it was that release for you. It was the connection for you. So it doesn't have to be, I wrote this whole paragraph about how I was feeling or what happened that day. It doesn't have to be that. Yep. Appreciate that. <laughs> And every day I say the same thing. I'm going to go home and I'm going to journal. And I don't. So today's got to well, be. Maybe it's like I said, maybe you would rather be on the fly and just when it, it moves you, that's when you decide that you want to journal or write something or speak it. Like it doesn't, maybe you're not good with setting aside the space. Maybe that's not your, your way and that's okay. Yeah, I, I think I, I need to set aside the time because if I try and do it during the day, I've got too many different things going on and I'm not going to be able to even get close to any kind of a zone to write something that is meaningful that's coming out of mm. me. So I, I think I need to, you know, say, you know, after after dinner, whatever, I'm going to be just, you know, I, I love this. I'm, I'm listening to this audio book. It's called Tiny Habits. And he talks about how to build a habit, something that you want to establish. So if you want to establish this habit of journaling, maybe your thing is that every day you just grab your notebook and, and, and sit and have it there. And that's it. All you do is get the notebook and look at it. Mm. And you do that. And then maybe one day you start to open it. And then maybe one day you write the date and you just build on that because if this, your goal was, all I need to do is put the notebook in my hand every day, start there and build on it. And well, anchor really it to something that you always do anyway. If you want to start journaling in the morning and you always sit down to have a cup of coffee, when you get down and get your coffee, you put your notebook in front of you. Hmm. Or maybe if you want to do it in the evening after I eat dinner, I, um, I put my feet up on the porch or something for five minutes. So when you do that, you grab your notebook and then eventually you'll start journaling. So just yeah. find something that you know you're already doing without thinking about it and anchor that to it and build on it. It's called Tiny Habits. I can't remember the author's name, but it's fascinating to think how we can rewire our brain to create a new habit by adding it to something that we're already doing anyway. Love that. I, I, I nailed down the two. I pick it up. I look at it. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> no, what's no. the next thing? So your next step is opening it up, opening it up <laughs> and holding a pen. Not, yeah, might not write just, right away, but yeah. And you don't have to, if you do write, okay, great. You get to celebrate that, but you don't have to, you say, okay, I picked up my notebook. I opened it. Yes. And celebrate it. That's the other yeah. thing you want to anchor a good feeling to it because we always are drawn to something that makes us feel good. So mm -hmm. if you anchor a good feeling to that habit, you're more likely to repeat it. You know, you just sparked something in my head. Why, why do a lot of us default to negativity? Why, why is that? I feel like we've just been so hardwired to, we're hard on ourselves, And so we, we put that on other people, right? We are always constantly judging ourselves. Most people, I guess I'll just put it on me. I'm, I'm, and so because we're, we're so hard on ourselves, and that's how we're thinking, we're, be, we're putting that on other people. We're projecting it. So it's, it's easy to, and it's easy to default to the negative because it's more obvious, right? It's, it's harder to find the silver lining in situations and be like, you know what, this could go this way. And I'm grateful this happened, even though it really sucked. Like, think about it. Like, why did this happen for me instead of to me? And that perspective just kind of keeps you in a position of power instead of feeling like a victim all the time or just feeling bad. I mean, it's hard to always try to find the positive thing, but I feel like when you're doing that, you're also keeping your energy high. You're also being just a more positive person, which is is never a bad thing. Cause I mean, it's not easy, but I feel like when you're the person who always finds that silver lining, it just, your path is a little bit less rocky because you're not going to be so affected and take the negative and run down with it. You know, you just said something now that connects to what you said a couple of seconds ago is habits. So make it a habit of looking at something positive, kind of mm -hmm. retrain your brain that you're always thinking 
in a positive direction without defaulting to the the negative, which is just so easy to do. And, you know, so many times talk, we've got a friend on the phone and what do you do? You start bi itching about stuff. Oh, yep. Can you believe this? Can you believe that? And I mean, it's, it's easy. Some, it's easy. Right. And then all you, all you're doing is looking for feedback on things and, and yeah. you're talking, you know what your friend is going to say when you complain about something, you know, it's, and, and that's why it's easy. Cause you know what yeah. you're going to be back. And to me, it's, it's sometimes um, it's surface level, right? It's easy to stay here. If you start going below that, it's, it's uncomfortable. And if you're not used to having that relationship with somebody, it's hard to be vulnerable and get in, in your heart and to, to kind of get under the surface and be like, why do you keep bringing this up? And like really start asking those questions. Cause it could be, they don't want to hear it and you don't want to hurt their feelings. But sometimes, you know, I feel like if I am having a conversation and I'm just trying to be positive or optimistic about it, and maybe the person's not in that space, I say, okay, my coach says, I'll hold the bucket for you for five minutes. Like you can just go off and say whatever you need to do. But when that five minutes is done, we're, we're, we're changing the subject. And because sometimes you need to get it out. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you, you hold the bucket for somebody and it's like, and tell them like when, the, when it's done, when the five minutes is done, we're done. And, and that's a good thing because you want to be able to get it out if you're not journaling or, or, or talk to a friend and then, okay, how can we look at solutions instead of the problem? And that's what I ask people. Do you want solutions or support? Like, because maybe you don't want to hear what I have to say. Maybe you just want me to listen and that's okay. I love the five bucket fill rule. I think that's fantastic. Now you have a, <clears throat> excuse me, an end point and you know where you're going to go and that all right, we're done. Now let's move on to something not to not not to say that filling the bucket with the negativity wasn't productive, but now we can move on to other stuff. Yeah, we don't we don't have to stay there. When I was like um, depressed and going through all the the struggles with my husband in our marriage, and a friend of mine, he used to he told me this all the time. He'd say, "Do you know what the definition of insanity is?" And he would keep saying that, and I was like, "This is annoying." Like, yeah, doing the same thing over and over, but it wasn't registering. And then one day, I was texting him with the same old. I'm tired of this and this. And he's like, you know, you've been doing this for 10 months. And he just texts me back. Do you know what the definition of insanity is? But for some reason that day I got it. And I was like, I am keeping mm -hmm. myself in this, what happened and why and this negativity over and over. Like I got it. I was like, I'm, I am here. And I was like, I get to stop this today. Stop and so sometimes you can tell people stuff and they just don't get it because they're not ready. You know, and so you get to have grace for people, but once they get it, they get it, hopefully. Uh, I got it. <laughs> I'm, seriously. And I've heard that quote before. And, and I think it's it's somebody, maybe Einstein said it, yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, I'm not going to, you're going to think I'm crazy when I say this. What no, you just said, I got it. You just made it crystal clear in my mind in terms of how insane it is to keep repeating we call it the negativity, whatever it might be. It, it, why would you want to do that? It's insane. Yeah. Really? It keep it keeps you in a, in a bad space. And I just kept replaying the events over and over mm -hmm. the same story yep. and why, and why, and why. And it wasn't moving me like literally 10 months bed bound. Like it wasn't moving me forward. And he just kept saying it until I finally was like, okay. And then I don't know. I just feel like we we're doing this in other aspects of our life. It could be in a relationship. It could be with work. It could be just a habit that you're doing and you're wanting things to change, but yet you're doing the same thing over and over and expecting it to be different, but it's not going to, you have to change. Like you really have to take that pivot or else you're not going to get those different results. And it, sometimes we just don't see it. And that's why it's good to have a coach to help you identify those blind spots or even a good friend that can say, do you know you've been saying the same story for 10 years? It's always a different person, you know, that you're, but it's the same story. So now it's not them, it's you. And that's, it's hard when it's us. Mm. It's hard when it's us. And it's hard to reach out to a friend that way because I, you know, my best friend, I've known him since we were, you know, junior high and he knows my life. I know his, like, you know, everything that's gone on. And he would, <laughs> he would never say, what your friend said to you. And that's not, doesn't make him a bad person. He's just not good. He's just not that type of guy that's going to say, mm -hmm. Do you realize what you're saying like over and over and over again. And you're right about going through the sequences in your mind, you know, things that have happened to you, maybe, you know, call it, you're carrying a grudge. You have an issue relationship situation, whatever it might be. You just keep replaying it, replaying it. And it's not helping you. Not, you're not going no. anywhere. 
Yeah. And it's hard to identify it. Like for me, I did not get the pattern until, I mean, and he said, like I said, he said it to me for months. Mm. It's just, for some reason, that text, I actually, that's all he sent me. I sent this long, long, and then he just sent me back that quote again. <laughs> and I was like throwing my phone like this again. What? He's not listening yeah. to me. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not listening to him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think I, that's the thing is like, I want to have those kinds of relationships with people where I can go below the surface with them, because that's where I feel like you have the most connection with someone um, when you can like have a really honest, raw conversation about something that you see and you know that it's coming from love um, and then not get offended and understand that like, because most of the time we know, we just don't want to admit it. And so that's why I wasn't upset when I finally got it. I'm just like, you know what, thank you because you've been telling me this and I wasn't getting it. But now that I do get it, I really appreciate that you just kept drilling it into me until I did, like you didn't give up on me. And yeah. now we can have those conversations below the surface because I know that you really do care. You give, you give a crap about me and that's important. And I'm not saying your friend doesn't, but sometimes we don't know how to get below the surface. Like we feel like like I, I love my in-laws. Right. But we don't have the kind of relationship where we're always saying, I love you. And I was like, I just want to say, you know, I love you before I go, but I just, sometimes it's hard for me to do it because it's not something that we've done. I know they love me, but it's not something that we say, Yeah, if that makes sense. And so sometimes yeah. you just, if you start doing it, they will do it. And that's what I did with my family. I just, just saying, Hey, I love you. I know you love me, but we don't say it. And then it's like, I love you too. And it's like, okay, now it's not weird anymore. Yep. So yep. Like, I, like I've been saying, everything starts with us. If you want to see something change, then it starts with you first. So when I change, everyone around me changes. We're all like, I love you now, because that's what we, it's what I created. I love you for saying that. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> and I love you it's, it's almost as if as a life coach, you're the mirror and your friend was mm. her. Here it is. I'm going to put it in your face. And as you were, you're talking about that, I remembered a friend and this is going back you know, a year and change ago. Uh, on my journey and you know, things transpired and I like, I, I had no idea what was happening. And he said, no, you did. No, no, you knew. And I was like, mm, but no. And then I thought about, it. I was like, yeah, you're probably right about that. And he's also the, the friend and I'll never forget the text. Still have it saved screenshot that said habit doesn't equal happiness. Ooh, that's a good one. Habit doesn't equal happiness. So when you think, you know, your life, you're just doing your life. You think it's, yeah, it's okay. It's all right. Is it really, is it really okay? Is it as, as, mm -hmm. as are you fulfilled as you want to be? Is it everything, you know, when you, and you got to peel back the layers to take a look yeah. at it, to really go down deep there with yourself. Um, maybe we're all, you know, a lot of us aren't happy. Right. Because of we're just doing life. We're just going through the motions. And that's one thing I love about the, the younger generation that's coming up. And I know they get a bad rap, but I feel like they are standing and saying like, I don't want to be stuck in a cubicle for 40 years. Like they're just saying there's an alternate way to live. And yep, I love yep. that they are strong enough to come out and say it, even though people are like, you just don't want to work. And it's like, yeah, but I don't want to work like that. Like I want to have some kind of balance because there's got to be more to life. And I feel like as we are coming, like some friends of mine, we're all in our forties and we're saying like, we feel like now in our forties, like we are coming into our own, we're finding our voice. And we're saying like, you know what? I know, I know the things that are definitely a no for me. And I know the things that are a yes for me. And I'm okay with saying that now, whereas, you know, five years ago, I would have never, you know, everything would have been a yes, no matter what. And I think it's important for people to find that voice younger because happiness is not overrated. Like whatever your happy thing is, you get to do that thing. You're going to be a better person. You're going to be better for the people around you and the world. Like it's going to, it's a ripple effect in a good way. Yep. When you're doing something that makes you feel like you're actually contributing instead of punching in and punching out, like it steals your soul. <laughs> you know, you, you, I admire like my parents and grandparents that did that for so many years, but I'm like, how, like it's, it's, I can't even understand it mentally how you could just do that when you almost feel like you're really making a huge sacrifice. Um, and they're, they're, they're okay to stand up and say, you know what, there's a different way. And a lot of, how many 18 year old millionaires are there now because they forge their own path? Like it's insane. Yeah. It's really about quality of life. And, and to your point and, you know, our generation, generations before it was like, when you had a job, you respected the job and not to say that you shouldn't do, you know, well, but 
there ain't no loyalty. <laughs> you, ain't put, no loyalty. <laughs> you put all <laughs> your life into something and, and it could be two decades of that. And you could get an email tomorrow that says, yeah, we're making changes here. We're cutting back. Yeah. I, I was thinking about how you were saying how, you know, you weren't taking your vacations and, and things that were yours to take. Yeah. And um, my husband and I were listening to this guy last night and he was saying how we're all stuck on the days of the week, the Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday. But and so you're like, oh, it's just another Wednesday. But this Wednesday, no, like this is our first time experiencing this Wednesday. Yeah. We're all experiencing it together. And so with that thought process, it's like why wouldn't you take your days? Because this is not just another weekend. This is a weekend you've never experienced. No one's ever experienced. Like take your time and enjoy these moments because for us to say, I'm going to take it in 10 years is really arrogant. Like you don't know if you're going to be here in 10 years and then what? Plus you earned Those it. Those days are just, you, you earned it. That's the other thing. There's, yeah. a, there's a song that uh, came out when I was a kid and it's called, We May Never Pass This Way Again. Mm. Interesting lyrics. If you ever Google it, Seals and Crofts. I want to, yeah. Um, it it kind of says a lot, you know, and and that's where it came in my my head. What we're talking, you won't we'll never experience this Wednesday ever again. And it could be like a lot of other Wednesdays, but it's not exactly like last Wednesday, and it won't be exactly right. like next Wednesday. It'll be different. And we're all experiencing like now in this moment for the first time together. Like it's never happened. And I just like you know what we know that, but we never really think about. It. It's just like okay, Wednesday. I do this on Wednesdays. No, yeah. <laughs> no. It, it could be any other day. It and could. Here, here's another because I'm a. I've been playing music on the radio since I was 17. No joke. That's been my. You know, if you look up in the wall, you know, I got Bruno Mars. There's Sting. There's Shaggy. There's Katy Perry. Met them all. Talked to them. Blah 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 blah. Here's okay. my other. Here's my other. Look at the lyrics. Song. It's called "The Fuse" by Jackson Brown, and it's about life as a fuse, and the fuse is always burning. Mm. And the world is always turning. It doesn't stop, no matter what. It doesn't and, stop. And you got to harness the power of it. Um, but interesting lyrics, you know. Check them out. You know, for yeah, everybody. I definitely will. Uh, I love yeah. that. And I, and I'm not. And the funny thing is, I'm not big into lyrics. But then when I find something that really strikes a chord, it like hits me like a sledgehammer. Like, bam! All right. And it's funny because that that song, the fuse. Uh, I, I I knew it when I was way younger and used to listen to it. And was like, eh, a cool song, interesting lyrics. And then as I got older, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's speaking to me and a lot of other of us at the same time. There's something, there's something with that. And mm. uh, when you think of the analogy of the fuse burning, you know, it was, it was lit when you were born mm. and it's never going to stop until it stops, that's... you know? So what's happening in between there. I love that. And, yeah, and it's out. like, even with change, like, we've been changing since the day we were born and some people are get to a certain point where they stop changing like spiritually or emotionally in there, but you know, they're physically growing older and it's like, I've always been this way. No, like you've been always changing. You just decided that this is where you got off, you know? Mm -hmm. And I love that because there's so many, I'm not a lyrics person either, but now as I'm older, when I hear, I'm like, I never knew that song like that. Like I've never heard this song before, but I have, so I can't wait to listen to those because. Yeah, check them out. I think, you know, from what we're talking about, I think it might, might resonate. Definitely the fuse that's uh, and really it ends, it ends talking about doing things to help people. Like there's people starving in this world and that's, that's, you know, it talks about the life moving forward. And then basically the song says, how the hell are people still starving? How are they, you know, why is this going on? Right. We can make a change. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cool stuff. Uh, yeah. How did you get all started in, in this? What was uh, your, your yeah, path it, to help people? Yeah. It started with, you know, trauma. It started with, you know, heartache and pain and really just, you know, and I had this realization like a couple of weeks ago, like I had been so, like ashamed of like trauma and, and hiding from the shame of, and the guilt of things that weren't necessarily my fault, but that I went through and I just really internalized it. And so once yep. I decided is like, I don't, I don't get to be ashamed or guilty for something that I had no control over. Um, I'm going to be grateful for this situation, even though it sucked, just because I know um, that it put me on a trajectory of change and, and making different decisions. And so um, all of these heartbreaks and, and pain kind of got me to a point where when I thought that we were going to get divorced and it was going to be over and I decided to get up out of the bed and start just, you know what, well, if this is how it's going to be. I need to be a better person. We have kids. And I started focusing on myself and everything changed. Our relationship changed because I was like more 
sure of who I was and what I wanted. And I was able to articulate that. And I was able to come to a place of complete forgiveness. And I actually tell my husband this <laughs> and he hates it, but I, I just say like, I can't believe there was a time when I couldn't even look at you or say your name. And now I can say that the affair was the best thing that ever happened to our marriage. Like if I could go back in time, I would go through all that again, because I know where we are now because of that. And I would have never, I would have never said that then. But I know that it made us get below the surface. It made us, you know, when you feel like your back's against the wall, you have nothing to lose. You and you, you, you kind of feel like you do want to be here. You put it all out there, and you get really vulnerable and raw. And that made me see, like, you know what? I'm not the only one who's had their heart broken or have dealt with marital issues and was able to turn around. Like, I want to help other people, you know, save their marriage. And if that's not the plan for you, find your voice. And what can you do coming out of that to be a stronger person? for yourself first, and then your family. And it really just, it was, it made such a huge dent in our marriage to be able to go through that horrible situation and to be like, like we still make it, like we're like, when people see us, they think we're newlyweds. Like, it's insane to me how all that happened and to be able to say like, I've like forgiveness, I would have, I've never can even say the word. Mm. <clears throat> it's not easy. It's not and, easy. And, and I'm going to be, transparent with you, what you went through, going through. Mm. Same. It's not, so ending, hard. not ending the way it end, ended. It's ending different for me, but it is what it is. It uh, is. And I did forgive, but it continued as mm. I was not aware of, and I'm pretty perceptive, but it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> but it's better. I know it's better in the end. I feel it. Oh my- yeah. And that's good. I mean, because sometimes it doesn't always come back around. And I feel like, honestly, if if he wasn't the one pushing it to come back, it wouldn't have because I was like done. Mm -hmm. And and once and I said, dang, I said you were giving 100 percent. I was giving zero. And and sometimes in a marriage, it's even they say 50 50. It's sometimes it's not like that you know, and it's, yeah. a, it's so much work. And I was like, I really applauded him for never giving up on me because, because he kept on trying. Eventually I got to a place where I could try, you know, and I, and if he would have quit, we wouldn't be together right now. And I know that. And, and I guess if people, the point is, if someone is showing you, like, if you both say that, you know, what, you do want to try again, then let's try. But if someone is continually breaking your trust, it's like you choose yourself. Yep. <clears throat> my friend, my friend was a, She's a therapist and I've known her since I was 17 and I haven't even spoken to her in years, but we text all the time, like, like we're brother and sister. And she said to me, save yourself, <laughs> which I never did. It was, it was always me taking care of everybody else. And, fan, and I never did any self-care zero. I'm mm. the guy that went to the gym for 20 minutes. I'm like, ah, got to go to work. Cause I feel guilty. I gotta, I gotta get to work. Um, whole different ball game right now. And I don't mean to, you know, to sound conceited, but now it's about mm-hmm. me. <laughs> and that's <laughs> good. Yeah. When they tell you on the airplane, put your mask on first. Like there's nothing wrong with that because when you are the best Steve, everything else will fall in place. 100%. And just trust that. It doesn't require you to give the extra effort to other people because people that are supposed to be there, they're going to gravitate toward you, towards you. And the ones that aren't, they will weed themselves out. You don't have to have a conversation like this isn't working. They're going to see how you are showing up and being, and they're going to make that decision on their own. And that's, and you get to be okay with that. What they say, you know, people are in our lives for a reason or a season. Season, yeah. And we can't choose and we just get to be who we are and really just appreciate those relationships, good, bad, or indifferent. Yep. And just be unattached to that. Just be the best you and everything else. It is what it is. Yep. And, and this is the same friend that said, and I've never heard this and now I hear it a lot, maybe because I'm listening to it, but some people don't serve you anymore. They just don't serve mm-hmm. That's it. That's the way it is. Don't they don't feel bad. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. Uh, but just don't serve you. I just looked at the clock. We're like way out of oh. time. <laughs> like, like we're we're actually over. over I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't care. It's great. I think it's fantastic. Um, this has been like there's a lot of by the way, part of the plan, Dan Fogelberg, more lyrics for you. Part of the okay. plan, and and part of the lyrics is someday we'll all understand. Ooh. Oh, I love that. That sentence right there. Yeah. Someday. And that to me, that's like, once you've lived it, you get it. That's when you understand. Yeah. 
Or maybe Ooh. not. Maybe there's maybe somewhere, somehow, your spirituality, your faith, wherever it might be, wherever it brings you, maybe that's how you understand at some point. Maybe mm-hmm. your last day on earth. <laughs> maybe you understand. Part of the plan. I, don't know. I love that. You know, I got some music to listen to today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, they're all kind of in the same genre, you know, call it yacht rock, that kind of stuff. But um, the li- even if you didn't listen to it, look at the lyrics. It's um, good stuff. All right. Tell everybody if they want to work with uh, Life Coach Latanya, what do they do? Yeah, awesome. You can go to my website, lifecoachlatania.com. That's L-A-T-A-N-Y-A. And of course, you can have my links to Instagram. You can go follow me there. Send me a message. I will respond. I will reply. And I'm just here to however I can support you on your journey. Like, let's go and make the world a better place. It starts with us. You are fantastic. You get right to it. And I can feel your passion. And it's, it's, it, thank you. It's, it's refreshing. I got to be honest with you. And uh, if you shouldn't have regrets, my only regret was, why don't we do Zoom video sooner, you and I? I know. This is because <laughs> like we go over time. That's why. <laughs> yeah, so. All right. It was uh, great talking to you, and uh, hopefully sometime soon. And best of luck to you, too. You, too. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Thanks Are you looking for even more of the podcast and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you can now listen live on the MyTuner Radio and online Radio Box apps for iOS, Android, and the Amazon App Store. Or check us out online. Search for Business News Network on mytuner-radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on onlineradiobox.com slash US so you don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.